Nanda Master RE training video. Introduction to reactive ion etching. Reactive ion etching is a common dry etching technology, which is used in the microfabrication. RE is directional etching process, in which the chemical etching is accompanied by the ionic bombardment. The sample should be placed on an arc powered electrode. Next, the etching gases will be introduced to the vacuum chamber. When we apply the power to the electrodes, it will generate the plasma inside the chamber. The plasma will produce chemically reactive spices. They could react with the substrate to form a volatile byproduct. We call this the chemical part of RE process. The plasma also produces the high energy ions. They could use ion bombardment to remove the materials without a chemical reaction. It is known as the physical part of RE process. To develop this RE recipe means you need to adjust the process parameters to balance the chemical and the physical part of RE process. Nanomass RE NPC3000 is a batch top reactive ion etching system with a shower head gas diffusion and water cooled RF platen. It is designed to meet a wide range of needs, including the sample cleaning, photoresist stripping, surface modification, polymer and graphic etching, and the silicon etching. The chamber opens from top for the wafer loading or unloading. It can accept up to 8 inch wafers. It is equipped with a 4 MFC gas flow channels argon, oxygen, CF4, and SF6. The ARF generator with automatic matching network delivers excellent process repeatability. The system could be operated under the auto mode. And next, we will talk about the operation of the system. Before you use Nanomask RE, please reserve the tool online and lock your information on the paper lock book in the lab. And please remember to include the cleaning time and when you reserve it online or when you lock your information on the paper lock book. When you go to lab, you should find the monitoring base status. And then you could click this number master. And you will find the software for the NAMAS RE process. And firstly, and we need to check the logbook and make sure there's no problems with the previous user usage and everything's working fine. And we need to check and make sure the cooling water is working, the cooling water in the green status. And also make sure the chamber is under vacuum. And with the roughing pump on, and also with the turbo pump on, the both Spartan in the bright green status. Okay, and we are ready to go to the next step. Step to log into the system. So here have the three levels, engineering, process, and operator. So user need to use the operator for your process. And the password for the operator is H, E, T, C, H. And then you can click the login button here, and we will log into this menu. So here we have the three menu with operator, vacuum, and the process. Step three, venting the chamber. We need to choose a vacuum menu from the right side of the software and click on the vent button to vent the chamber. When the system starts venting, the display will change to pump down. And it will turn off the turbo controller first. And you will find the turbo speed uh, will drop from 100%, will slowly down to zero. And now you can find here the turbo on this button has turned from that to the bright green and to the dark green status. If you need around 
10 to 15 minutes and for turbo speed jump from 100 percentage down to zero and at this time you will find this the venting chamber the button should be in the green status and also the turbo on should be in that dark green status And when the turbo speed is below than 10 percentage, it will also turn off the roughing pump. And you should find that the rough pump on button, it should also change from that to the light green status to the dark green status. And then we still keep waiting there and until turbo speed drop to zero. When the turbo completely stops, it will vent in the chamber and give the nitrogen into the chamber. And you should find that the venting chamber button, it will be flashing between the light green and the yellow. When the venting is completed, and that venting chamber button should also turn to the dark green status. And now we can open the chamber top to load our sample there. Step four, loading sample. 
when the chamber is vented to atmosphere status, but sometimes it may need a little extra nitrogen into the chamber and help you to lift your chamber top up. And we can click this lift chamber top button on first, and you turn to the light green status. And for the top one, the open chamber vent valve, and when you turn it on, it will give you the extra nitrogen to the chamber. It will short your waiting time, and for that, the chamber top is lifting up. So now the chamber top is lifting up, it will stay there. And there have the O-ring, make sure the O-ring is still flat and inside the groove. There have a large O-ring, have a small straight O-ring there. If you only have the one sample, you can put it into the center place. If there's several ones, and you can place this around the whole plate there. And this is the gas light. The gas light goes through to the top lecture, and then you go to the chamber and apply to your sample surface. And the one load your sample and make sure you will not cover that gap. And also you will not move that plate too much. And before we close the chamber top, and we can use a wipe, a so-called little IPA to clean the O-ring side and also make sure the orient flat is inside the groove. And sometimes the orient may stick to the top part. And if it's not flat, it may have some issues and during your pumping on process. So this is a one glass slide we place on top of this plate. It's in the center of this plate and for the etching process. And then we go back to the screen here. And we can turn off these two buttons. And now we're ready to pump on the chamber again. Okay, so now we're talking about pumping on the chamber. We still go to the vacuum menu and click pump down button. You should find that the button information will change to the vent immediately, but the status information we saw in is pumping down. It will turn the roughing pump on first, and you find that the roughing pump on button it turns from that dark green to the bright green status. And now we wait a while when the pressure is dropped and then it's ready for the turbo on, and you should find a turbo on button will change from that to dark green to the light green status. And then you should find the turbo speed will increase from zero percentage, and then will up to the hundred percentage. And if we run the edge process, so usually we should not wait there and until the speed is go to 100 percentage. And we can wait. And when your turbo speed is above the 20 percentage, and then you will be ready and go to next step. And also always double check and make sure the power supply and also the auto tuning network is already turned on because this machine is not frequently used. So we usually let user to turn them off and when they finish their work. And so you also need to double check it and before your process, make sure they already turn on. So the top one is a power supply. The bottom one is a auto tuner. So you can turn those two power buttons on. And also for the auto tuner, make sure it is in the auto mode.
Now we'll talk about how to run the Azure RSP back auto mode with this system. First, click the operator from the right side of the software. You could load the recipe uh, from this page here. Today, we will take the Silicon Azure recipe as an example. Um, you click that button, choose the Silicon Azure recipe, click OK, it will load the recipe there. Mm -hmm. And if you need to work with other recipes, the same way, click the same button there, choose the recipe you need. We provide the 50 watts recipe for the sample cleaning, provide the 100, 200, 400 polymer edge recipe for edge the polymer or the photosynthesis materials. Also have the clean recipe to clean the whole chamber after the edge process. You could choose the recipe according to your application, according to your materials and the thickness. Uh, double check, make sure the recipe name is correct, and then you could click load the recipe button. It will load the recipe to the system. Next, click the process from the right side of the software. It will show the edge time, the unit is seconds, and also the etching gas, gas flow, the pressure, and also power. There only have the one parameter you could change is the etching time. So that means the etching rate is fixed for that recipe. You just change the etching time according to your material and your thickness. About adjusting the process time, if you try this recipe for the first time, uh, or you changed your materials, so you should calibrate the edge recipe by yourself. Uh, you need to do the edge process firstly for some dummy sample and know the edge rate for these materials. And then you could try this recipe on your real sample there. Because when you transfer the etching process from one system to another one, the chamber height, the chamber size, the distance between the two electrodes, and also the chamber history, all those things are totally different. The etching rate will change a lot. Calibrating the etching rate is very important for you to get the repeatable results. If you already know the edge rate for your material, and you could input the time according to the thickness, and then press the enter button. Uh, here, so we plan to do the one minute edge process. Uh, we could input 60 seconds, press the enter button, and to update to the new edge time. And then we go back to the operator menu, click the start button to run the edge process. It will initialize the system parameters firstly. Next, we will enable the gas flow. You should find the SF6 become green and the gas flow will increase to the 70 SCCM. Next, it will regulate the pressure to 100 millitor by decreasing the turbo speed. So now you can check the turbo speed is around 100 percentage. It should drop around like the 20, between 25 to 30 percent, it should be around 100 millitor. You really need around five to six minutes for this process. And while the pressure is around there, it will also will be stable in that level for a next 30 seconds to one minute. Make sure it is stable there. Next, we apply our power. Now you could check this gauge. It shows the chamber pressure is 100 millilitre. It will stay around this level for the next 30 seconds. Make sure the pressure is stable. Then it will apply our power to electrodes. This light will turn from the dark green to the light green. You should find that they have our power. It will generate the plasma inside the chamber. And through the window, you will check there have the plasma light inside the chamber. 
for the reflect power, we need that number as small as possible. Usually it is zero, one, or two, very small number. But if you find that reflect power is more than 10% of your setting power, so for example, here, you set your power as 150 watts. Your rack power is more than 15 watts. That could be a problem. Remember to report to stop. At the same time, you should find the timer will go down to zero automatically. And also, you always need to record decibels for your process. If you use the same recipe, you find decibel change a lot. It may be also changing your action rate or your action results. We need to check what's the reason cost that one. When your timer drops to zero, it will automatically turn off the power, turn off the gas supply, evacuate the gas line. Now we still need to wait until the whole recipe is finished. So now recipe is completed. You should find that they have recipe down in this information line. And also the sequence complete and recipe complete, both light is turned to this uh, light gray status. And now you are ready to went to chamber to unload your sample from the chamber. Uh, just remember, so the arch power supply and auto tuner will always keep off. So every time before you run your process, remember to turn it on. When your process is finished, we need to vent the chamber to unload your sample. Go to vacuum menu, click on that button to vent the chamber. The button should still pop down, but the status light so venting there. It means it's venting now. You should find the turbo on this button turn from the light green to the dark green. The turbo speed will drop from the high speed down to zero. While the turbo speed is around 10 percentage, the roughing pump will also be turned off. You should find that the rough pump on button will turn back to the dark green status. The turbo speed will still drop to zero. And you should find that the one the turbo speed down to zero. If you have the nitrogen gas go to chamber, the chamber pressure will go up. And we should wait until chamber pressure goes to atmosphere status. And then we could open the chamber to own our sample from it. So the whole process, it should be around one six to eight minutes. While the chamber pressure go to atmosphere status, you should find the three button, the venting chamber, the roughing pump on, turbo on, all three button will become dark gray status. That is ready for us to open chamber on the sample. When the chamber has complete venting, click the lift NPC top button and also click that the open chamber vent valve button. It will take around the one minute for the chamber top lift up and then wear the gloves on your sample from the chamber. After unloading and we could soak with a clean wipe and with IPA to clean the O-ring side and make sure there's no particle and also make sure all the O-ring is in place. And next, click that lift NPC top bar again. So this time we close it and click that to the open chamber vent valve button again to turn it off. So this will slowly close the chamber down. And now we are ready to go to pump down our chamber. Now we could pump down the chamber. Uh, we still go to the vacuum menu and we could click on the pump down button. 
And after click the pump down, you should find that button view turn to the vent, but for the status view, so it's pumping down. And the roughing pump will be turned on firstly, and you should find that the pressure will drop. And once the pressure is dropped below that minus one tor, then the turbo pump should be on. And you will find that the rough pump on and turbo on those both buttons should be in the bright green status. Uh, and then we use that turbo pump. It's keep pumping down and until the chamber pressure below than the minus five tor. And then we can go to next step. So usually this process will need around like the two to three minutes. Now we will talk about uh, running the clean recipe. After you add process, there will have some residue inside of the whole chamber. We need to run the clean recipe to clean the chamber wall and also the holder. So we go to the operator menu, we choose uh, use a clean new recipe, and we load it to the system. Next, we could go to the process menu here. And then we use oxygen and argon for this cleaning recipe. The oxygen gas flow is around 80 SSM. Argon is around 30 SSM. We keep the chamber pressure around 200 millitor. We keep the power around 200 watts. The total cleaning time is about five minutes. Now we go back to the operator menu. We click the start button. It will run this recipe automatically. Enable the system parameter firstly, next gives the gas into the chamber. You should find oxygen and argon both sparking the light green status and also their gas flow and go to our set value. And when your gas flow stable, it will regulate to your chamber pressure go to 200 millitor. And now you can check our turbo speed is around 100 percentage. And for the 200 millitor, so your turbo speed should be around the 25 percentage. That will take a little time for the turbo speed to go to that level. And you just wait until your chamber pressure go to 200 millitor. It will keep around that level and make sure your chamber pressure is stable. Next, we have the R power applied to the electrodes. Once the RF power button turned on, and you should find our power, go to the set value, and through this window, you should find there have the plasma light inside the chamber. Still the same way, record the two numbers, one for the reflect power, one for the DC bells, and keep recording those two numbers. If you find it has some big difference from your previous recipe, and also we need to double check it. And timer will go automatically down to zero. When the timer is zero, it will automatically turn off the gas supply and also power supply and pressure controller. And now we still need to wait. It will evacuate the gas line. And until you find both like the sequence complete and recipe complete, both light turn to like light green status, it means your whole recipe is finished.
Okay, so now our recipe is done. Last step, we need log out system. Choose the top screen, click on the log out, turn off the power button of the auto tuner and the off power supply. Double check the screen, make sure all the pump is on and also all the interlock is in the light green status. Make sure you have locked your information on this paper logbook for your usage. That is all for the operation of this system. Special notes and restrictions. You can only use anonymous RE if you have been approved by the ML Microfab staff. Reserve it online and log your usage on the paper logbook. This tool is reserved for the following materials, like the photolyzed, polymers, organic coatings, and silicon. If you plan to etch other materials, talk with staff firstly. Touch any part inside the chamber, wear the gloves. Only the clean sample you could use inside the chamber. No powder sample, no liquid sample, no bio sample inside it. When you are done with your work, always clean the chamber and also leave the chamber under vacuum status. Here's a troubleshooting table for the Nanomaster RE equipment. When you go to the lab on the software screen, you find the interlock in the dark green status. It may be because this building is out of the compressed air, nitrogen, or the cooling water. You need to report to stop. Do not keep running your process. If you find the pump in the dark green status, you could check the system is in the vent status or the pump down status. If in the atmosphere status, you could go to vacuum menu, click the pump down, and wait a while if the both pump turned on, and you could keep running your process. If not, report to start. There also have uh, other situation is like the roughing pump or turbo pump uh, is not working. For that one, you need to report to start. During your process, your process stop due to the power issue, gas issue, or the pressure issue. Uh, you could follow these solutions here. Double check the power button of the auto tuner and the R power supply. If they are not turned on, turn it on, uh, redo your process. Uh, and if for the software issue, you could click the end sequence button and then redo your process again. If it still have the same issue, report to start. Uh, or another situation is like the power supply, like the auto tuner is not working, or uh, the gas supply have some issues, there's empty gas tank, or the pump or the valve is not working. If that happens, report to starve. During your process, your refract power should be in a small number, like 0, 1, or 2. If it's more than 10% of your forward power, it may be because of generator is not working or the auto tuner is not working. Click the end sequence button report to starve. If no starve is available but the instrument is not working, you could do the following. Click on the end sequence button. It will stop your process. Send email to microfabstarf at ml.illinois.edu if possible. Stay by the instrument when trying to contact the Microfab staff member. If it is necessary to leave, please leave a note on the RE and stating the instrument is down and lock this information on paper logbook. If a dangerous situation is evident, like they have the smoke, have the fire, or you smell some of the unusual chemical smell in this room, and you could press the EMO button, so which is on the front of this machine, and notify all the other users in the room 342 to evacuate and leave the room immediately. You could then contact the proper emergency personnel from a safe place. After watching this training video, if you have any questions about this machine's operation or during your process later, you have any questions about the process development, welcome to contact me. You can call my office phone, you can go to my office, send me an email, and I'm here to help you on the operation and the process development. And I hope you could get the good results with our machine here.